this is something that is near and dear to my heart and something that makes me fighting mad. Okay, so maybe you have heard about the allegations against Madonna and the child. And you may think that this is just a new something trying to discredit somebody. But what if I told you that this goes back to at least 2009? <music> Well, hello, my silky friends. Yes, I am a little bit off topic of what I normally talk about as far as Delphi, whatever, the true crime. I warn you right now, I'm going to get real animated. So I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see this report on Madonna. But something about this intrigued me to try to find out the truth. Okay. I'm going to put all of my personal feelings aside. I've never been a Madonna fan, but, you know, who cares? And it's not like I'm going to be, Oh, I am so shocked and appalled that such a thing could happen. No, I am appalled, yes. Shocked? Absolutely not. I saw a video. I thought, I'm going to Google it, right? This is a very scratch-the-surface search. First, it took me to 2009. Yeah, 2009. And this is where the Star Tribune does an article about Madonna, you know, trying to adopt a child. Now, it says all this time back that officials in Malawi, which is where she has gotten four children, human rights activists in Malawi leveled charges against Madonna of child trafficking, kidnapping and generally behaving like a bully as the pop icon tried to adopt a second child from one of Africa's poorest nations. Okay, so, you know, you may think, well, there's a lot of controversy there. She wasn't a real popular person there. And you can think, well, maybe it was just a personal dislike. But let's go on. She goes ahead and she adopts a second child from Malawi. Fast forward to 2014. In January of 2014 in Miami, there was an article that read, Club Madonna reopens despite human trafficking investigation. Really? I, I don't remember hearing about that, but okay, let's read on. So I screenshotted this article and let me just scroll down a little bit. So basically the club was shut down for two weeks. Check this out. Read this. Allegations. A 13 year old runaway had been dancing there. Yeah. In the buff. Against her will. Well now that is a problem. Okay. First of all. I don't see why major charges weren't brought against this in the beginning. If they were, I didn't hear about that either. Oh, I am shocked and appalled. And I wanted to highlight this part as well. The club owner says, what you have is a fluke situation that if it occurred, occurred for a limited period of time. Oopsie. If that actually occurred, it was just limited. It was a fluke. Okay, first of all, how are you going to tell me you don't know that a girl is 13 years old, or at least underage. Uh, no ID, not, what, what, what? And then let's just talk about the time. Oh, well, it just happened for a short period of time. Okay, well, what about all the other crimes that happened for a short period of time? Oh my goodness, I just committed armed robbery and home invasion for like a week, and then I never did it again. You should just, you know, let me go. Oh, it's just a little bit of time. Seriously? What the what? Are you kidding me? It doesn't matter if it was one time, one second. You have an undressed 13-year-old girl in your club. And we're just supposed to look the other way? I don't think so. See, I warned you. I'm going to get heated about this. So now let's fast forward to 2023. She's accused of the same thing in Malawi again. Oh my goodness, do you see a pattern here? You know, look, if you're a Madonna fan, that's whatever. But as a person, something ain't right. 
Now, this comes from the Ethiopian World Federation, who is begging the government of Malawi to intervene, investigate, stop this. Let me just point you to a video by a guy named Sloan, who does an expose of the back storylines of some of these kids and how basically she lied, you know, and said you know, she was going to just kind of borrow the kids and, you know, she was supposed to bring them back, yada, yada. It's, it's a whole back story. These children were stolen. Yeah, that's what I said, stolen. Not because their parents didn't want them. And let me ask you this, okay, for heaven's sakes, why is it you have got a gazillion dollars? Adoption fees and processes in the United States are very expensive for the normal working class person. So you can kind of understand why some families do seek out other nations to adopt. But this is clearly not an issue for you, Madonna, because you've got tons of cash. So why not adopt from the U.S.? There are plenty of children here. If you want to buy, no, oh boy, I didn't mean to say that, but oh, I don't know. It is what it is. If you want to adopt a minority child, there are plenty of those too. They're typically not adopted as quickly as, you know, other kinds of children. My guess is that you don't want scrutiny. You don't want follow-up. You don't want supervision. You don't want to have to answer to anyone. So let's just go to this very poor country. All y'all people, you know, with plenty of cash who are doing this. Why are you going to these places? You know, it's a thought. I know some people just really have, you know, goodness of heart and they really want to do that to rescue someone. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. So in the midst of these allegations, what does Madonna do? Oh, we're gonna play a little bit of Wag the Dog. Ta-da! I'm going on a world tour. Yeah, let's get some good press going. Let me shake my behind a little bit and make everybody forget about what these people who are just haters are trying to say about me. Right? That's what you do. So in the midst of me reading comments, because you know that's what I do, I came across this one that said something about Madonna's Instagram. Now, I... I do have an Instagram. I'm hardly ever on there. I am not an Insta fan. And even if I were, I would definitely not be following Madonna. But this person said that she recently, like, deleted all of her videos. And they had gotten really quite dark. And so, you know, I'm not going to take somebody's word for it. I go on Instagram and I find the certified Madonna, you know, persona. And there are seven videos. Seven. Lord, I've got more than that, and I don't even use Instagram, and I'm nobody. So, I'm like, how do you only have seven things on your Insta? Most of it is about the world tour, but the last one, I'm going to play a clip of the last few seconds of the most, what I could find the most recent one. Or is the man whose pleasures depend on the permission of another? Okay, did you catch that? Poor is the man whose pleasures depend on the permission of another. What? What? What are you trying to say? Because that means you shouldn't have to have somebody's permission to get your own pleasure. In what kind of world is this okay? I, I, I can't even. Y'all, I can't even. To me, that is as much an admission of guilt as anything I've ever heard. Now, going back to the Sloan video, I'm reading the comments, and there is one at the top. Oh my goodness, listen to this. I usually don't read out a story, but this one is not only worthy of recognition, but it is vastly important that we look at this. Now, this comes from Liberian Queen TV. There are no videos on her page. I'll get to that in a second. But what she says is this. 
I was adopted from Liberia, Africa, shortly after a 14-year war. I was adopted in the hands of these white savior-minded people who extremely abused me. They would tie me up in cages, feed me baby formula, mm, me, and beat on me, and burn me. These people tried to kill me at least two times. My father served the president during the time of my adoption and made the woman who facilitated my adoption sign a contract that I was to be returned home to my family when I turned 18. I'm 23 years old now and that never happened. After almost trying to kill me, my adopted parents threw me into the state's hands and completely abandoned me. Never visited me nor wanted anything to do with me. Well, that was probably a blessing, I'm just saying. Um... I'm going home this coming March to press charges on the woman who failed to honor the contract my father made her sign. The Liberian government had no idea about this woman owning an adoption home and had no idea she was selling kids and human trafficking. It was easy to do these things because after the war there were so many displaced kids and separated families it was an easy thing for her to do the government back home doesn't know i'm alive and can attest to these horrific things that happen to so many children they have no witnesses nor victims to keep this woman behind bars just me and my three baby cousins who are now 18 and were supposed to be returned home last year on their 18th birthday. And thank you for speaking up on these crimes because they are very real. I'm also currently suing my adopted parents, DHS, and the police department that investigated our case. And then since I'm going home this March, I will be going before the Liberian government and telling them my story and what this woman put us through. So of course, the first thing I wanted to do was get in contact with this woman and see if she would talk to me. There are a lot of comments on her post where people did uh, try to reach out to her, but when I tried to post on there, this is what I got. I got an error message. No matter what, I tried it multiple times. I couldn't get through. I don't know if the original poster uh, blocked comments after that, but I don't know who this woman is. If you do know, uh, please let me know because I would, uh, I would love to get in touch and ask her her story, although she may not want to do it until after she goes through the legal process, and I get that. Here's my question. After all of this, and you know what, Madonna is by far not the only celebrity or person of fame that has been implicated in stuff before. This has been going on for years. And there are multiple agencies that try to help, but it's going to take a voice, a large voice, an adamant voice of not just an agency here and there. It's going to have to take people with a heart, with a conscience, like you and me, to stand up and not be quiet and say these things cannot continue. The sad truth is, is most people don't care unless it's their son or daughter or niece, nephew, grandchild. If it doesn't touch you personally, then you just sit back and say, oh, that's terrible. My goodness, I can't believe these things are happening. I'll be so glad when this world just ends. Like, I can't even. I warned you, I'm upset, but if it's not us, then who is? Because as you can see, historically, nothing has been done about this, or let's just say very little, of exposing the real sources. I feel like if we could just take a small amount of time that we devote to our social media, I'm not coming at you, I do it too, but can't we take some of that time and spend it making a difference, being a voice? If we are loud enough, we cannot be ignored. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, it was a rant today. Um, I got really upset about this whole thing. So, you know, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm talking about Delphi. My goodness, you made some great comments on the last video, and I am going to be um, addressing some of those and diving deeper into some other symbolism and stuff. So I'll be working on that in the next few days. Thank you so much for putting up with my rants and lunacy and ravings. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week and remember to stay silky.